Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Let's sing. Hey, everybody. I'm Alex, and this is The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight. Well, well, after a big new year, there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Her nibs. I don't know <laughs> why. Remember that? Her nibs, Miss Georgia Gibbs, and I could never figure out what a nib was. <laughs> I don't know. what. Now, I always thought it was associated with George Burns, but no. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Maybe, yeah. Just a perception, because I heard you use it, and I hear occasional references to it. Yeah. Nib. Her nibs, her nibs, Lori Thompson, ladies and gentlemen, who uh, is, uh, was was my uh, aide de camp in a little <laughs> radio expedition in San Francisco, which is how many years ago was that now? I think it was eighty six when we when we first became acquainted, first started doing the morning show. I remember the meeting we had. Yeah. And so 86, and I, you, your hiatuses. I was like, okay, how long was that section? How long was this section? Yeah. But uh, to, I would say total, at least 14 years. 14 and, years, yeah. So that's how many years ago? Um, was uh, I always think of the end as 97-ish. That was, that's when CBS bought Live 105. Yeah, but, so and, that, that, that's... 26 years ago? Lots. Yeah, I've okay, lost but, count. But then you add the beginning of it, and it's like 36 yeah. or 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, we so we so, go back. So uh, isn't it time we stopped for, uh, started to forget it? Oh, <laughs> I mean, you know. no, I, I, but I never want to forget it. It was just fun going, because you were different than any... Uh, radio guy I ever worked with, or person, radio person I ever worked with. How was I different? How was I different? You were real. You just uh, talked, and that sounds so trite, but you talked about things that people actually talk about. You did a, you know, you were doing a Seinfeld before Seinfeld did, like with, uh, you know, topics like that seemed taboo to radio before. Yeah. yeah. And you would just take them on, which I thought was great because that's how people talk when they're just hanging out with their friends, and it just seemed more genuine to me. Well, I, my problem was I loved radio uh -huh. so much that I hated radio. <laughs> Explain, please. In other words, I loved it so much that when I saw it being done in a rather, how could we call it, slipshod manner, mm -hmm. I couldn't stand that. You know? Yeah, that's troubling. When I when I listen to a podcast and people have mistaken a podcast for just a couple fellows sitting around shooting the breeze talking about nothing, talking about chicks, talking don't have. Oh, any by time. the way, they ha they have to uh, all these podcasts have yeah. to show their microphone, which I don't do because I hide it. See it there, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Why do they? But, oh, you but I hide it. I don't want the microphone to be seen. This is magic, no. you know. Exactly. And uh, they have, yeah, because so I'm in broadcasting, you know, and so the microphone as a visual, I guess, they think it yeah. enhances their. Yeah. Crap. But anyway, and they all have these big, giant microphones with the big stands, you know. And they're yeah. all <laughs> sitting there with the microphones, and that's a pod. No, hide the goddamn microphones, you know. Yeah. Fun, there, for years, magic. TV stations, TV did everything they could to hide the microphones. Every now and then uh -huh. it would drop into the frame and you go, oh, there's the microphone. You know? Uh, I know. Oh, big. Somebody's going to lose their game. Or a little lavalier you put here that was almost the same color as your shirt. You know, so nobody yeah. knows that there's a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, we have to have a microphone. That's how you hear us. But, no, you know. magic. But anyway, so no, so that's what bothers me about podcasts. But what bothered me about broadcasting primarily was how they sucked on the teeth yeah. of their audience. 
And it was, was like, hey, talking down to people. Hey, hey, good morning. How are you? Glad to have you here. Well, yeah. mine was, hi, good morning. You're here again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I just didn't believe that you had to kiss the audience ass in order to get them to listen to you and that that was demeaning to them that yes, you felt you what, had to be that way. You taught me never talk down to people, never talk down to the audience because it's just, it's obnoxious first and it's just pretentious. And so to be more honest with the audience, show them your, I don't know, show them your frailties, tell them about your life, which is not always going to be, hey, really great but that you didn't have that false bravado i mean what, I, what, what i always hated about about radio also was when i got more and more power uh mm -hmm. i wielded it but not against you or against the people who worked with me i did it against the general manager and the program director <laughs> right ruffle a few feathers you did well you know <laughs> yeah. i go in there and it's basically like really you want to get mad at the cow that's giving you the milk? You know? uh, <laughs> right. But uh, that's what I liked about working with you. It was just, and plus it was it was real. It was genuine. It was what people are talking about, not a sanitized version. I, I think, yeah, I think that was part of it. I think the other part of it was it was just anti-everything in radio. I mean, I was going back, I was going back to an old model. You know, I, I, uh, everybody said, oh, you're so original and the show is so different and blah. I said, no, it all goes back to the radio I listened to when I was growing up in the f mid 40s. You know, I had a radio and I listened to these shows and they had an audience and they, they had music and they uh, had uh, all kinds of things. And so that's why I brought back the studio audience. Right, and we had a live band when you would do the, we would do the live broadcast once a month or something. Yeah. And those were so great because you took oh, those uh, old. Uh, when we those, did the Christmas shows, the oh, Supper with Schwartzman uh, programs, yeah. we had a full orchestra. Yes, and that's, you brought the elements of entertainment that are timeless yeah. with us, with yeah. you. So anyway, so I, everything I did was based on the model I grew up with. And the radio mm -hmm. that had long since disappeared. And information compellingly and entertainingly delivered. There, there, was, there was another level to it, though. I, my, my favorite uh, disc jockey when I was growing up, I hate using the word disc jockey, but he used it, so I'll use it. Uh, because I hate disc jockey. That's kind of like, if, uh, oh, you work here at this office, you're a disc jockey? Yeah, you know, right. and then they'd be upset. How can you call me that? Well, don't call me a disc jockey, right? Because there were so many hacks out there who were yeah. disc jockeys. Don't call just... me a disc jockey. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, I, I kind of had this uh, uh, this whole thing where I I really railed against anything that was done like you were supposed to do it now. I hated the fact that the radio I loved was replaced by this model Yeah, that just seemed to be everywhere. I mean, every station did it. You didn't, you didn't have an audience and you didn't, you know, you didn't try to entertain. I think that's the biggest that's problem. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I mean, you, you yeah. I mean, it did you want to, when you're hanging out with your friends, you, you know, you're hanging out and you want to entertain each other and you want to have a blast. And that's what you brought to the radio that I hadn't worked with before. And so that was what that to me, that was wonderful. Yeah. So, I mean, I just I I But anyway, what I was saying is you get this power at a radio station and you can start wielding it. I mean, if they <laughs> gripe out, well, why did you do that this morning? You go, you know, hey, I'm the cow. OK. Yeah. You know, just milk me and let's go, you know? Right. Otherwise, uh, back off. Well, That's I found out, who is it, from Chuck or somebody, how much money I made for that radio station a year. And I didn't realize it. He knew the number. I can't remember what it is now, but it was like sub quite substantial. Right. I mean, it for those <laughs> days, it was 4 or $5 million a year. Yeah. You, you and were, I you didn't realize that. that. I mean, if I realized that, I would have asked for more. 
Well, yeah, because I think the rumor is, now this is the anecdotal that's been passed down, was that Joe Field, who I always really liked, and his, his son, you know, David, runs it now, but yeah. uh, he supposedly, he was a lawyer, he was an attorney by trade, and he had a case involving an FM radio station, and he thought, in a visionary way, this is going to be, this is going to take off, and this will be the standard. So he bought the station that became Live 105, it was Hot Hits, Hits, um, only I don't think it was Hot Hits when he purchased it, but he, it was something well, he like went out he, and got a, it, he went out and got a consultant. Right. Okay, yeah. and the consultant said, hey, why don't you become Hot Hits Kits because I've got yeah. Hot Hits Baltimore and I've got Hot Hits this, you know, and so you become Hot Hits. Well, I mean, yeah. that was ridiculous. You know, it's, it's, I, when I went over and it was Hot Hits Kits, I went, <laughs> you know. But you can't just change a radio station overnight if you want to retain listeners. Well, here's the thing: so. maybe most people, if you're listening to us and you were in San Francisco and you were listening to us at the time, okay. Mm -hmm. Here's something you didn't know: when we went to Modern Rock, yeah, the guy who owned the radio station didn't know we did it. Really? He didn't just know kind of it. He, Under they, the table. They 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 just they said to him, "We're changing the name of the station. We're going to mm -hmm. Modern Rock," and he didn't know the difference. He wasn't a he wasn't a music guy. You know, he just owned radio stations and wanted to make money out of them. Yeah, investment. So they completely changed the format without him knowing it. And, and it, it was, wasn't and, and it wasn't until he came to San Francisco once and he turned on the radio station and he said, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> What did you do? And he went to the radio station and he sat down with our general manager, who at the time was Ed Cramp. Mm -hmm. He did, Ed. And he said, you know, you behind my back changed the format of this radio station. And then he paused and he said, but apparently it's working. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Don't change your and thing. he said, if it wasn't working, you'd be out of here. Yeah, you know, but he made a gamble but, and, and, to, and, and but, credit it worked. But don't try to do that sneaky thing on me ever again. Yeah. yeah, well, you had a resource like Steve Masters who was so into music. When he would go on vacation, like in Europe or Bangkok, he would bring home suitcases full of records because he was so into music and the styles and the different, uh, the new music that was being done out there that nobody played. Yeah. And that it worked. So we changed the name of the format to Modern Bangkok. So, uh, <laughs> by that, the way, can you hear drilling going on outside? I cannot. Why well, did a dental a Good. Google Sado dentist open next to you? Uh, no. What happened is they're tearing up the courtyard. You know. Oh, you mentioned your beautiful courtyard, but it's going to be restored to its 1920s. No, 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 no. They're just trying to keep it from leaking into the basement. So well, they're, that would they're, be nice. they're going into. We have these four quadrants of of dirt and whatever was in there, some plants and stuff, and they they've dug them all up and are putting in this membrane. Okay, <laughs> insane in the membrane. And then they fill it back with the dirt that they took out, which is you know the dirt. It's been there since nineteen since uh, the the nineteen hundred. Okay. That dirt. Not a lot of nitrogen. Been there yeah. since 1900. I yeah. think maybe it's time to just replace it with new dirt. Yeah. You know, new healthy <laughs> dirt. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not going to be good for corn or soybeans. And they're doing point. this thing where they're taking the dirt out and they're putting it in plastic bags, which are piled up all over the courtyard. And then, <laughs> then, when, they, when, then when they have to fill up the membrane, they fill it with the, with the old dirt, the 1900 dirt. Yeah, one would think that you would use because I would think that new dirt is just more readily available too. I mean, you go to. A I don't think bucks. it's that expensive. I think you're probably paying more in plastic bags than you are, you know, in. Uh, yeah, get yeah. somebody to drive a semi back to Illinois, load it up. We'll sell you. You dirt. can get. You can buy. I'm sure you can buy dirt, and it's probably very cheap. You know. Home Depot, Lowe's, yeah, I'm sure you could. Yeah, but, not, not much market for dirt, but there's a bigger market than you yeah, think with yeah. construction. Yeah, you know, I'm glad people can't hear the uh, the noise then, because yeah. it's rather loud today. <laughs> you know. Well, you know, they, 
construction I can kind of forgive. Yeah. Like if I'm staying at a hotel and there's construction going on, it's like, well, they can't really help that. Yeah. I wish I had stayed here yeah. and I'll do my research better next time. But yeah, I had that happen in Nashville. I was there for a week and they forgot to mention that they were launching this major construction project. And I had to work, I think I, I was there to do a, a test work thing, a test stint. And it was they, like, they bring you in for a week and you work and then they decide whether they want you or not. Right. And it was, you know, so I'd get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and they weren't working then, but they were at 3 p.m. when I was trying to sleep. Well, t so. Let me tell you something about going in for those, you know, doing a week and they decide yeah. whether they want you or not. Right. Uh, uh, who was it? Camel. Camel. Yeah. Uh, brought me in uh, to do a week. Mm -hmm. for exactly that reason. And I described that week as a way of understanding what it was I did. Mm -hmm. Where on Monday after the show, they're scratching their heads going, what the hell was that? What in the world? Tuesday they're going, I think I was right yesterday. What the hell was that? <laughs> on Wednesday they go, well, that was pretty good. That wasn't bad. Yeah, it's, you know. it's working. Um, Thursday, they went, wow, that was terrific. <laughs> and by Friday, they offered me the job. Yeah, okay. because people and, forget you were at KMEL before you yeah, came to. Yeah, but what I had yeah. uh, usually said to people was, they said, um, oh, we want to bring you in for a day to see how you do. And I go, no, hmm. you got to bring me in for a week. You'll never understand me in a day. Exactly. It's just the whole yeah. tone and everything. It takes a little getting used to because it's not like other things you've and, heard. And that's, that's really, you know, because, you know, you're right. The, what was the term I used to use? I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't remember things that well. But <laughs> I said the, the hardest thing to sell is something nobody's done before. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. all the people understand is what's already happened. Yeah. You know. So when, if you do a radio show and you sound like what's already happened and been successful, God, you're great. You're terrific. You know, yeah, that's like when TV shows are pitched. They describe them as, you know, all oh, in the family meets family Yeah, yeah they always compare it to one thing to another, yeah. Yeah, it's, kind of a game show, kind of a... It's, a it's all, all, all in the family meets Creature from the Black Lagoon, yeah. you know. <laughs> I was wanting to do a show called creature from the black saloon and you could film it at a bar yeah. and people come in and hang out at your speakeasy for a segment 15 here 15 there and wouldn't that be fun yeah because it's a combination between creature of the black lagoon and <laughs> and cheers you know yeah that's it they, <laughs> yeah. perfect you learn the art of the pitch the hollywood yeah, pitch yeah 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 but anyway so what i was saying is is that you know, I just never liked to do things the way they they were doing them then. I like yeah, I, I like the old radio, and I said, and the only thing I had in common with the old radio was the desire to entertain, mm -hmm. and that was it. You know, yeah. Uh, so um, uh, you know, you, you you say to yourself, uh, uh, "What can I do today that's different?" And so, and and we never pl obviously. Part of the show was I was lazy. <laughs> you know, people would say to me, what are you going to do on tomorrow's show? And I go, uh, let's see your show well, notes. Well, let's see what happens. You know, mm -hmm. I believe in an organic show in which you went on at 6 o'clock in the morning and you went, hi, everybody, here's, it's Alex. And uh, who we got on the show today? And they'd throw mm -hmm. me a list of the people that was on the show. And... We would then ad lib it through the whole thing, and it was organic. Yeah. It was, and that's what, when you say natural. That's what what was natural about it. it was mm -hmm. it purely organic? But I want to ask you now. See, when I got hired at Live One Hundred Five, they said to me, "You know, uh, we have a woman in the morning who does the news. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd hate to let her go. Would you? <laughs> would you want to test her on your show and see if you like her?" And I said. No, just have her do the show. I said, yeah. I don't want to fire anybody because I'm coming in. So, Which was a gracious move. 
That well, was it wasn't easier. so much grace, gracious as I didn't, I really didn't care, you know, mm -hmm. because my idea was whatever I needed, I would mold you into. Right, which I felt, that's why I was like a sponge, um, just absorbing everything that you were doing and learning from Well, you. I think the hardest thing maybe I had to do, and I don't know, you'd have to answer this, is to get you to understand that you didn't have to worry about a lot of things that you used to worry about. Yeah, and that was that was a, a ease, a relief, because I needed all kinds of relief at the time. You know, I'm going to, like, essentially from my home, 2,000 miles away, didn't really know anybody there, and that's your first thought. You know, am I going to get fired today? Am I going to get... Oh, no, I that's my... Listen, I've never felt secure in the radio business. Never, yeah. not for one minute. You know, I realized that I was one questionable interview or one <laughs> of questionable joke away from getting fired. Yeah, and it's gotten so much more pronounced in this, uh, like Claudine Gay at Harvard. Yeah. You know, she wrote an editorial in the New York Times on January 3rd, explaining it from her point of view. And it's... She, well, how could they she, get rid of her? She was black and gay. Uh, and a woman, uh, yeah. No, she wasn't <laughs> homosexual. She was. Her name is Gay. It's the, yeah, but that's, um, that's wait a minute. I'm not one joke away from being fired on this show. No, so. you can relax now. Yeah. You can say what's on your mind. But no, I never. I don't think I ever had a secure moment in radio. I really oh, yeah. didn't. Well, you know, because you and I both talked about hmm? how we we thought about getting into acting, but it was like there's so little security in that. Well, and well, I and I wanted to be an actor. Yeah, that was. I got into radio figuring if I do this, somebody will say, "Come act." Okay. Oh, okay. And that yeah, never, just, it never happened. Never well, happened. I just thought that if I do that, there's a little more security, and then maybe I can find something else. I can learn what's going on in the market and voiceovers or something. I always wanted to do. And yeah, you have mm -hmm. to. Um, radio offers you a little bit of more security than being. Well, you and I were this close to being characters in a Bug's Life. That's what you said. Yeah. yeah, and that would have been fun. That would have been a blast. Because now I watch. There's a good movie too, with uh, Tig Navarro about the voiceover industry. Yeah, and it's it's very fun. If you can tell. It's well, they they fun. actually had two characters they had created that were based on you and I. That would be so fun. Yeah, because I mean, it was a small part, but it, yeah. it, and they called me at like ten o'clock in the morning when I got off and said. Are you and Lori available today? And I said, for what? And they said, we're, Pixar called. And I said, for what? And they said, well, we're, we've written two parts based on you guys, and we'd like you to do the voices. Uh, so what time can you meet us? I said, well, I think I asked you, and I said, we can, we can meet there about 3 o'clock in the afternoon because we mm -hmm. had to go all the way. I think it was in the East Bay in those days. And... Uh, I said, uh, you know, what, but we can do it. She said, well, let me get back to you <laughs> in, 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 a, in a couple hours, and we'll, mm. we'll solidify it. So, okay, okay, fine. So I don't hear from them until about 1, and then they call me, and they go, oh, well, we just had a meeting, and we decided we're not going to use the characters. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> It was too real. <laughs> yeah, we, we 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 changed the script. So, and that's how acting would have been every day. You know, you you're here. Yeah. You're up high as a, I, in the in the morning. You're just so jazzed because you're up for this. Well, big no, but part. you got a job. You know, it could have yeah. could be two two lines in a movie, but you got a job. You got work. Yeah. But yeah. you know, the thing that somebody told me once, and it was kind of sad to hear it and I can't remember who it was, who said to me that every day, every movie they ever did, the last day you sign out, okay? Oh, you, I didn't know this. Yeah, I and, and, a lot of yeah. and, and, and every a time lot of he said I signed out, I didn't know that that wouldn't be my last day acting. See, that would be freaking, the head trips that your mind could put, Yeah. Uh, no, could put on a situation. And, I mean, and there, there was more things like that. I mean, uh, Patrick Stewart, I had him on the show here in New York at Sirius XM. And after he left, I said, uh, by the way, I said, thank you so much. And he said, anytime you're in town, 
come on by and we'll talk to you. And he said, well, I'll do that if I still have a career. <laughs> I mean, he always felt that this job was the last job he was ever going to have. And, and yeah. Patrick Stewart. I know, man. It just goes to all levels of performance and acclaim. Yeah. So anyway, and, all I got to say is you take a guy like me who has no self-esteem whatsoever, and I went into <laughs> I went into a business that spends every day trying to reinforce that notion. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. I know. Self-esteem is good. I'm finally building one, you know, just... Yeah, by the time I have enough self-esteem, I'll be dead. Anyway, yeah. hey, it, we're running out of time here. Well, wonderful enjoy- talking to the great Lori Thompson, and we shall do it again next week. How's that? That sounds like peachy. Bye bye. Don't try. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah. I love Lori. I love having her on. And she'll be on again next week. And, uh, you know, it was funny. I was listening to part of it, and I suddenly realized, you know, I I get off on tangents, and then I don't pick up where I left off. But what I was saying was is that my favorite disc jockey as I was growing up, and I call him a disc jockey because that's what he called himself, and then I went off on all kinds of tangents and never came back to who the guy was. And it was uh, Don Sherwood in San Francisco. And uh, uh, he called himself the world's greatest disc jockey. <laughs> because he, th- I think he thought the term disc jockey was silly as well. But anyway, so that's our, uh, that's our, our story for today. Let me see here. Let me just get to my stuff set up here because I didn't set that up. Okay, now we're, we're set up. And nobody's calling except for two people, uh, certainly people who are worth it. You know, they're very, very good people. Uh, they are, in fact, uh, Jeff and Charlie Wallace, a world famous couple, Jeff and Charlie Wallace. Uh, hello, Charlie. And uh, Jeff is still trying to figure this thing out. Uh, let's see here. Jeff is connecting to audio. Charlie is connecting to audio. What's your pro? Oh, Charlie, you got it now? Huh? I can't hear you. I I don't hear you at all. Sorry. There we go. Okay, you're fine. Now we just just have to wait for uh, Jeff to come barging in here uh, but he can't figure out how to even set his audio up <sighs> oh well somebody go out to his house will you and set it up <laughs> oh, God. that's okay huh he'll figure it out yeah he'll figure it out well now he's got audio can you hear us jeff i think so and we don't have oh and you don't have the uh the uh Playback. Everything's fine. Try it again tomorrow. No, you're doing fine. You're doing <laughs> fine. Anyway, uh, thank you. Um, and my camera has been going glitchy on me all day today. I don't know why, but if it glitches, to hell with it. it doesn't matter. This is basically an audio show anyway with pictures. You know, <laughs> so, uh, so how you doing, uh, uh, Charlie? I'm doing pretty good. Four. Oh eight. Two four. Hmm. Yep, three months, total eclipse in Austin. <clears throat> solar eclipse. Oh, <clears throat> total solar. Total eclipse. solar eclipse. Now, will we be able to see it everywhere in the continental United States? Yes. No, just uh, just a, a strip going up from Mexico through Austin up to Cleveland. So um, we're not going to get it here in New York Cleveland? again. Yeah, you yeah. you might. You might get you'll probably have seventy or eighty percent totality. Yeah, you'll get. You won't get. You won't get the whole thing. The whole thing is it right if you're in the track. Yeah. Well, that's what we just in said. California, we're going to get eighty-two percent where I'm at. <laughs> okay, and I guess we don't know. I I have no figures for New York, so. No. Man. Too bad. Yeah. What? What'd you say, Jeff? I said too bad. Yeah. Well, Did you, you know, notice? 
Did we get a little snow today? Is that weird? You yeah. had a little snow. We didn't have any here. Just a sprinkle. Mm. Oh, I, think. I, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, it was just like... Bleh. We went up... Uh, Marjorie went, we got to get out of the apartment. I got, yeah, we got to get out of the apartment. She said, let's go up the uh, corner, up to the Harlem Tavern and have some brunch. Or, or actually, it's not brunch. It's like l lunch dinner. I guess it's mm. called Linner. Uh, and um, it costs more. Yeah, like that. yeah. And um, so we, you know, uh, we went up there. We started walking. I said, "Whose idea was this?" <laughs> I guess it's forty-eight degrees here. How cold is it in New York? Well, it was it was about forty-two, I think, but there was yeah. wind. Yeah, you know, and we and it was freezing. You know, and I said, uh, you know, not not good, not good. She said, my back's killing me. I said, of course it is, because yeah. the weather's cold. You know, so anyway. There are two things, you know, I got to tell you, this terrible thing about being our age and being married is that you get into a rut. And here's the rut we get into. I can always figure that when 1130 in the morning hits, she's going to say, let's make the bed. I can count on it, right? Good for you, her. You, 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 well, good for her, yeah, right. You know, and then sometimes she waits till uh, one o'clock to do it, and we make the bed, and then about two thirty, she pulls the blankets over herself. Now, what? It, what's that? You know, doesn't make sense. Like do it at eleven, so the bed will be yeah. made longer. But then the other part is, then she says, "Is there anything to watch today?" She'll always ask me that right after we make the bed. And then I have to tell her, no, there's nothing new. And then she keeps asking me throughout the entire day. Is there something, what's to watch? I said, I told you, there's nothing. <laughs> you know, and it's like, I, you know, she, um, I guess every week when she was younger, she used to go out like a lot of us and buy TV guide, right? Used to buy a TV oh, yeah. guide, put it right by there, by the, mm. in, in, by your, your sofa. And then when you wanted to see what was on, you would go through TV Guide. It, kids, there was a thing called TV Guide, okay? And and uh, now I'm her TV Guide, you know? You're uh, rich. Yeah, I mean, I, I she should do enough studying herself that I can say, is there anything for us to watch, mm. you know? And then, and then if I say, well, there's nothing to watch, rather than say, well, why don't we just uh, not turn on the TV set and talk to each other, she says... Well, then let's find a movie to watch. Now, I hate watching movies on TV, especially in the afternoon, for one reason. It's two hours out of my life. You know, and, and uh, I maybe don't want to do that. I maybe like a 42-minute TV show or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a movie is an investment in time. Especially nowadays when they're three and three and a half hours long. Oh, yeah. Well, we watched one yesterday. It wasn't that long, but it was called The Creator. Uh, have, you, have you seen it at all yet? I haven't seen it. I've seen ads for it. Yeah, it's, it's really quite good. Quite good. <clears throat> yeah. But anyway, so I, you know, whatever. So it, it, you're just in this rut. So I want to get out of this rut. So then I say to her, well, let's go take a walk. I got to get out of here. I haven't been out of here in a week. Let's get out and go take a walk. And she goes, oh, my back's killing me. Because she got a bad back. And I'm sympathetic to that. But then I never get out because I want to walk with her because I like to hold her hand because I'm afraid of falling. Ever since I took that fall, I'm just afraid of falling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, you get into this rut, and it's just sad. You know, yeah. Is uh, your jacket on backwards, Jeff? That kind of looks like the liner. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, wait a minute. I, mine's on inside out. Oh. Let's yeah, see here. Okay. <laughs> Let's get a zip over oh, here. Okay. You, you can tell it's cold in our neck of the woods here because yeah, look at what yeah. he's wearing and oh, look yeah. at what I'm wearing, and we're in the house. Wow. Yeah. But then again, far, well, I don't turn on the heat in the studio. Never turn on the heat in the studio. And the reason I don't turn on the heat is not for any other reason than it's hot in here already from all the equipment. Yeah. So, right. you know. 
Oh, here comes Ray. Okay, that's that's nice. Hey, I saw a movie that you guys might like. What? Ferrari. Ferrari. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Where where'd you go to a theater? Yes. Oh my God! What what's it like at a theater? Yeah. It was a small pl place. I mean, it was like a multiple place yeah. for different movies. Yeah, multiplex. Yeah. Yeah. So it was pretty small, and we sat in the back, so to speak. And yeah. It was yeah. Nice. It's great. Yeah. So it was all about uh, what's his name? Enzo was it? Yeah. Enzo yeah. Ferrari. Yeah. Yep. How he. Uh, it was about the racing cars. Yeah. That was a big part of it. But also, he had uh, practically two wives. What do you mean, practically two wives? Oh. Yeah, one was his real wife. Yeah. And the other one was the woman who he really loved. And they both had kids also. Mm. And this kid who was of the non- uh, not legal wife. Yeah. Yeah. It's the guy who really runs Ferrari now. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you mean the son of, of him? The son, yeah. yeah. Runs Ferrari. Runs Ferrari. Wow. And then, it, you know, there was all things going on at the same time. Obviously, the. Yeah, it was directed by Michael Mann. He did a great job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I may uh, have been that fond of around. my What? God, he's still around? Yeah. I remember movies from when I was a kid <clears throat> that he directed. Yeah, well, I mean, he did Miami Vice, and then he went on right. to doing movies. Yeah, 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 Miami Vice is one, yeah. Huh. I was yeah. never I was never particularly fond of him as a director. You mm. know? I was never particularly fond of Miami Vice. Oh, I, are you kidding me? I loved it. It's a great they show. Somebody in every show. It's a great show. It was a great show, and the reason it was I, I a great show is it TV. was the first. It was the first TV show that I can remember in the modern era that tried to shoot it like it was a movie, yeah. And it had a really cinematic look to it, yeah. and that's what made it special. And it really changed the whole look of television. Yeah, especially the fake Ferraris, huh? <laughs> what fake? Yeah, they didn't use a real Ferrari. The Ferraris that he drove around were models, and Ferrari sued them, uh, saying oh. that you, you you gotta you can't get a a non licensed product. You, you know, gotta you gotta a, like you got a hundred million dollar budget. You can't go out and buy or even rent a couple of Ferraris. No, no way. That, that fifty seven. During like season through the end of the whatever last season was, he drove what? around that white Ferrari with one mirror on it. What are you talking about? You talking? You talking about Miami Vice? Yeah. Oh, well, we thought you were still talking about the movie, the, mm. the Ferrari family. I haven't seen and the movie. movie. Mm. Yeah, but I'll go watch it because I, I used to own a Ferrari, so I'll go watch it. Yeah. Why did you own mm. a Ferrari? Uh, well, I went to uh, car shopping with a friend of mine that had a. Uh, uh, you know, a buyer's thing, and, and we went to a car thing a lot here, not far away in Hayward, and I didn't find any car I wanted. They had, you know, only a thousand beat-up cars, and there was a Ferrari sitting out there that said, bid on me, and so my, I said to my friend, what do you think a good bid on that? And he said, I don't know, bid five or six thousand dollars, you'll never get it that you can bid. And I bid, and I got it. It was a 308 GTS, the same. Yeah, for five thousand? Wow. The same look and 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 uh, mm -hmm. color as Magnum PI drove. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. To begin with, most Ferraris only came in one color, red. Red. There were yellow yeah, well, Ferraris and there were, I think, black Ferraris. But basically, if you walked into a Ferrari showroom, you'd see nothing but red. That's the color this was. And there's a the, the, and the Ferrari red, if I'm not mistaken. Was copywritten or patented by well, the Ferrari. Place does that with their colors? Huh? So mm -hmm. it wouldn't surprise me. <clears throat> yeah. Anyhow, the the, the it, buying the car was the cheap part. You know, you got to take it in for tune-ups all the time. I was yeah. driving Fords. I took it in for a minor tune-up, but that was twelve hundred dollars. 
And the guy says the major tune-up's coming up in like thousand miles or something. It'll be five thousand. I said, but I paid six thousand for the car. Mm. Yep. You know? <clears throat> he said, well, it's a fine. That's how they get you. Yep. <laughs> you know? So I sold it. I took it to the Ferrari dealership to have it serviced, to have an oil change done. And the guy said, you know, I have a buyer for this. Can can I buy this car off you and you get something different? And I'm like. Oh yeah, take it from me, Jesus! Mm. How and much? They you... gave me uh, about twenty five thousand dollars. Boom! Oh, that, yeah. and had somebody pick me up, and I it went. Wow! Home. So, oh, Alan, I just I just looked it up. If it's if you have one that's in good shape right now, they're worth one hundred and fifty k. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Boy, that was Ray. one of your better deals for you, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, that good work. night, Ray. Well, I, 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 I made five times my money, four times my money. Yeah, well, here you would have made like. Yeah. It's what well, they call it. It's what they technically the call in the financial business a fuckload of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All I had, yeah, all I would have had to do was hang on to it, huh? Well, yeah, you had to real. You would have had to really keep it up too, which yeah. is expensive. Yeah, Five thousand dollar. Yeah, so, I, you know, I was, I, was I bought it yeah. on a cop salary, and of course, I drove it to the police department the first day. They knew I was looking for a car, but not a Ferrari. And then everybody would give me shit about being on the take and stuff like that. I was going to say that. How many cops can afford a Ferrari? <laughs> well, I don't know, but just about everybody in the department wanted to drive it, and I let them. I thought, the hell, you know, I'm not going to keep the damn. That's what getting paid. Yeah. I saw an interview of a New York, an ex-New York cop who who did drive Ferraris to, to work, and he was on the take. Yeah. <laughs> and uh that's we, one of the way, re, ways they found the it. Thing at That's a real good point. You clocked it at what? 142 miles an hour. So we took yeah. it on the freeway one night, and we got Jeez. one of the, guys, the, the really? radar gun in the car, and he sat at the other end of the freeway, and when the car went flying by, he clicked the radar gun, and it, it clocked it at 142. Don't you love that our cops are out there doing that? Well, let me ask you, Ray. Ray let, me, let me ask Ray something, because I just noticed it. Either he's become a priest, or something went wrong with his neck. I believe the priest. It's a special order of priests with giant collars. Oh, he got a bad neck, Ray? What happened? Uh, uh, I Swimming. Oh, really? I pulled a muscle in my neck swimming. That's how old I'm getting. Everybody goes swimming for a very important reason. You get a lot of exercise, and it's low it's impact. Yeah, no shit. Oh, yeah. Mm. Was the just, water from water your head and, just from turning and breathing. No, really? Oh, I, be oh, I thought maybe you ran your head into the end of the No, pool. just from turning. I got a, I got a, uh, I got arthritis in my neck, so. Ooh. Wow. Mm. Oh, so how So long? the doctor told me I might have to swim with a snorkel. <laughs> what? <laughs> She said, "Is that is that a problem?" I said, "Well, it's just a, like an ego just an ego defeat." But uh, other than that, um, how would that work exactly? You're turning your head, and you got the snorkel in your mouth. No, you wouldn't turn your head with the snorkel. With the snorkel, you know, you just breathe with the snorkel. You don't have to turn your head. Anymore. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jeff, you changed the color of your shirt. Hey, next next, I'll take that one off. Yeah. No. All right, it just looks like yeah, you're gonna dress in layers. Yeah, oh, it was well. a strip tease, Jeff. Yeah, pretty fancy. So, uh, uh, you know, whatever. So, hey, I really enjoyed your interview with Lori tonight. Yeah, uh, they're, they're always really, good. Really good. They're, they're always good. Yeah, she's great. She has such good energy. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And we reminded think, me when she was on the radio with you. It was really well. So we think great. the world of each other, you know, and it it it. Uh, it's always a pleasure talking to her. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you ought to get her on your podcast. Maybe you'll have more than seven people listening. <laughs> Maybe I'll get one more. She'll listen. I'll have eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, she. I listen to it sometimes. I get about, I get about twenty regular people. I think, from what I can tell. Yeah. 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 Well, that's that's nineteen more than I have. So you know. Don't <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I'd have, I'd have, I, I'd actually triple my audience if I didn't invite people to call. You know, so. And just well, then what are we doing here? Yeah, exactly. It, if you weren't here, you'd be listening to the show, right? 
Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. But now you're not listening to the show. What, what, I wonder what the numbers on the audio are. I, 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 in fact, I got something interesting for you, but wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let's see That's here. the thing, though. It's like it's hard for me to tell what the tune. Like I can't tell what my tune in or numbers yeah. are. They might be good. I don't know. Well, are I they have saving your money. I have no, I have seven people good, yeah. listening oh. to the audio. Okay, so that's <laughs> that's not great. <laughs> How are you able to tell? Hmm. Because I have a thing here. I can go to. But oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Just got a thing. I know. It's just thing. It's all okay. different. So now here oh. is an interesting mm -hmm. statistic. I, you know, I have the, this this uh, server. I put the audio out on. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, I pay for the service, and so every month they send me a list of the top locations that are listening to me. Try this. Uh, Russia, we got point one three percent. <laughs> you know, uh, and ZZ. What country is ZZ? Mm -hmm. I have no in, idea. In uh, in French, ZZ is slang for penis. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, thank you. <laughs> anyway, so maybe it's France. Okay, in the U.S., you ready for this? You heard of that? I have thirty-four point two seven percent of the audience. Is so what, what is is, who's listening are, are from the United States. What do you think the number one country is for like three or four months in a row? It's not Ooh, the United England? States. Uh, England? Singapore. No. England. Germany. England. Germany. 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 With, Germany. With, with Germany. With about 65% of my audience listening from Germany. Holy smoke. What am I doing that's so German? Is it that I'm Jewish and they all look I at me? Say, <laughs> like, <laughs> they sit I around. Like and, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, well, I just said I'm Jewish and probably lose all my German audience now. That's <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, I, I, don't, I, never, I can't understand that. I just don't that understand that. good on that's you, Ray. Good. Maybe you'll get some word now. Yeah, I go to all my editions with. It's this amazing little... how Alan always changes the subject. He's like me <laughs> because he doesn't it. really listen to the program. <laughs> I heard what you said. You talked about ZZ. I heard you, you talked talking about, about Germany. Man. I heard what you said. Yeah, and then you mentioned something about his collar while I was saying I went something. Back to the collar. Yeah, you were talking about something completely different when he mentioned the collar. Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, 88 percent from the U.S. and then after that, it's like a bunch of countries at one per various amounts of one percent. Yeah, but you don't have that coveted German audience that I have. <laughs> no, I only have 0.84 percent in Germany. Hmm. You gotta what? shave your head and complain about your health more, Ray. <laughs> Where do you get your statistics from? Podbean, who, who is the company that hosts my my podcast? Yeah. But that's that's just the audio. I mean, I'm actually my video is starting to do better than the audio. Yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Well, of all the shows I do, the show that gets the best listenership is the Monday show. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. well, it's because it's during the day. No, oh. but I mean during the oh, week. Yeah. Oh, really? You know, it's up there on YouTube, and it's on, uh, it's on uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, uh, Audio. No, no, That's Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Yeah. Oh, Facebook, okay. Yeah, and between the two of them, it's, it's a rather lot, fairly, it's the largest audience I have. Okay. Well, you have a lot of women, too. Huh? Well, and Facebook is good for live stuff. Yeah, effective. Instagram's good for live too. It, it um, yeah. yeah. You know what's really good for live is what's the one that all the kids listen to? Um, what? Uh, Dick Type or? No, the the big the big one. Uh, shit, I can't think. The Chinese one. Oh, you mean TikTok? TikTok. TikTok. TikTok Live. Yeah. How do I get on TikTok Live? I don't know. You have to have. I think they won't let you go live until you have a certain number of followers or something like that. Wow. 
Yeah. No, but I it can be humongous. Can on TikTok. No, live. Oh. oh. Yeah, live, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I don't anyway. know. I have no idea how you get an audience. Really, I'm being very honest. In the old days, no. you just did a good show. That was all you had to do. No, now you got to do way more than that because there's a zillion good shows. No, you got to go out and promote like crazy. I know, yeah. You know. It's horrible. There's a lot of crap, and then there's you know a small number of good shows, but the small number is in the hundreds of thousands. <laughs> what, what do you mean the small number? Yeah. Well, the... I'm being sarcastic. I mean, there's like literally millions of there are, garbage there are, shows. No, there and then are. There's... There, uh, from what I heard, in the last number, there are over 30 million podcasts. Yeah. That That's means, why when I, I don't feel so bad when I'm in the top 10%. Well, no, I, I, that means that everybody in the world practically is doing a podcast. Yeah. yeah. You know. It's crazy. Yeah, when you count YouTube and you count podcasts and all together, yeah, it's probably 30 million. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I wonder how long this podcast fad is going to last. You know? Not, it, it'll it'll die See, out. See, here's what here's what's happened. I always liked mm. anything that democratized broadcasting. In other words, it allowed anybody who wanted to to do a broadcast. Because in the past, with radio mm -hmm. stations, you had to have hundreds of thousands of dollars to build a trans put a transmitter up and build a studio and go on the air. So, not, so it wasn't something that was available to everybody. It was available to people who had some money or some backers or whatever. So I always wanted the day to come when we really democratized broadcasting so that anyone who wanted to do broadcasting could do it. And uh, the day has come. And it's terrible. <laughs> it's horrible. You know? Uh, and, and what it's done is completely obliterated. For instance, radio just doesn't even really exist anymore. People that are in their cars, they listen to the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, the radios. Most of it's horrible. Oh, well, it's yeah. been it's been terrible for years. And then they yeah. sc scratch their head and go, "Gee, why is PRM yeah. people listening to us?" Well, because you suck. <laughs> you know. So anyway, and I love I love radio, and I'll tell you why. I love it over over the internet because on the internet everybody who's listening has to take up a stream. In other words, there has to be a stream oh. going out to them. One person, one stream, two people, two streams, three people, three streams. You know, million yeah. people, a million streams are being used. With radio, there's one stream and everybody latches on to it. Yeah. Well, I find that better than, you know, than the internet. Plus the, you know, if your internet connection goes down, do you ever have your radio connection go down? No. No, never. You know. You could get one of those wind-up radios and listen and you don't even need a you don't even need a battery. One of those yeah, cranky things, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. used to have one. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah. It worked great. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes, uh, yes, Sam. Uh, I'm, I'm going to send you a map of, actually, uh, I'm sorry to change the subject, but going back to, <laughs> going back to the solar eclipse, I'm going to send you a, I'm gonna send you a Wait, map. No, hold on a second. Let me rewind the program all the way to the beginning. <laughs> I've been looking. I've been Wait, going, hold on. I can do it. I can do it. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I can do it. Yes, Rob, not some year old, and yes, Rob, no, 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 it looks like the Grand Canyon, right? <laughs> okay, enough about uh, that. What were we talking about? Uh, I have no idea what we were talking about. 
The men are from Mars, women are from Venus, and all other genders are from Uranus. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> no. Well, oh, anyway, so God. so so you're gonna you're gonna send it to me, are you? Yeah, I will. I'll send you. I'll email you the link. Oh, okay. It's really neat because it shows you where you are, wherever you are in the country, how how long it's gonna last, and how, what percentage of coverage you're gonna get from it. And, you know, whether it's gonna be. Is it gonna not be? To change, not to change the subject, but how about those New York Nets? Hmm. What? what about the Nets? Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> didn't work this time, Ray. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's move the show forward. Oh, <laughs> Ray. Well, I'm sorry, it's my neck. It's 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 cutting off the blood flow to my brain. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. Anyway, uh, so so uh, yeah, so that uh, will we is it going to? Well, actually, it would it would have to be during the day? Yeah, it would have to. No, it could be yeah. during the night. Wait, is it? A, a, That's a lunar eclipse. If you see any. This is a night. solar eclipse. It's yeah. a solar eclipse. Okay. A total solar eclipse. Because I saw a complete eclipse in uh, the Mediterranean when uh, Kathleen and I went to the south of France, and we were in uh, right outside of Monaco, and there was supposed to be a eclipse that night. And sure enough, we I, I videotaped it as a matter of fact, <clears throat> and um, it was, we, it had was a, uh, we had a solar eclipse while Trump was in office. I there's hope he a, stares at it again. Hey, look, oh, yeah, there's there's a, glasses or anything on. Yeah. yeah, his whole family's on the veranda of the White House looking at the sky and the and the cameras. No, caught him. Everybody's got dark sunglasses on except him. He's looking at it with his. Yeah, well, he's an alpha male. Bare eyes. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's an alpha. You know, when when are we not going to have to ever talk about Trump again? Never. Can, can we just jail him tomorrow just to keep him out of the way? You know, he's gonna live till he's a hundred. No yeah. God. Speaking of that, uh, Ray, it was a good get, a good day today until you. Hey, the guy, he's pretty healthy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a big blob. He's a. I know, but it doesn't seem like he has any like diseases or anything. No, it doesn't seem because that's the way it's reported. But he pays people yeah. off to report it that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so maybe you're gonna tell me a guy with that kind of weight on him doesn't have some kind of either cardiac problems or yeah. whatever. He must have he something. Heavy, yeah. Yeah. But he only weighs two hundred and ten pounds or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. Come on. Yeah. He's the same weight as me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I still can't I, believe that people would vote for him. Still, it's like it's this. You're He's not going to vote for him? Democracy, really. I really think... You know, 20 years from now, he'll be running for the school district where he lives because <laughs> nobody else will hire him, will vote for him. Yeah. Listen, guys, we were talking last night about the 14th Amendment, and uh, and people were saying about how you, you, you shouldn't keep him off the ballot because he hadn't been convicted of anything. Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, he was never prosecuted or convicted of anything, but he was banned for, from holding office for life. There you go. Yep. Because the 14th, of the 14th Amendment, Amendment doesn't care whether. So, in other words, what you're saying is with Trump, even dog catcher is out. Any no elected office. Any public cannot office. Hold any elected position. Well, right. that could well be the case, but what do you say to those people who argue that that law was actually written right after the uh, Civil War? to uh, attend the question of whether those people could run for public office or not. And so that law was put into effect in order to prevent them from doing so. But maybe it wasn't meant to apply to this current situation. I'm only, I'm only saying what other people say, because I have no original ideas myself. Once somebody has already broken his promise to uphold the Constitution, you can't let him get back into office, because now he knows how to do it without getting caught. Ah. Yeah. I mean, I it's, it says it, it's pretty clear in there. Yeah, the 14th <laughs> Amendment, they didn't reverse it, and it doesn't say he has to be convicted. Well, it's we should pretty be coming, damn clear. Shouldn't we be coming up on a decision by the Supreme Court any day now? God, I hope so. They do not want to get involved. Are they, they even? T have they even officially taken it up yet? Nope. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they oh, did? It's, it's before them. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. They're yeah. going to have to do something. I yeah. think they said somebody said they had to do it by the fifth of uh, of January, which is That's tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Wow. No. Wow. But who well, knows? The problem is the primaries are starting up in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So yeah, they got to do it before that. Yeah. If if they say that it's uh it's legit every every oh probably every blue state will take him off the ballot. You know, I've been there during mm. political season, but I can't understand why everybody considers Iowa so important. Me either. It's it's it because it, it's at the beginning. No, but it's not it's not a primary. Oh, oh it's a caucus then? It's a caucus. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's very interesting to watch, and it's a nice thing to see, and it lets people get a, to, be able, to be able to rally around certain people and so on. But I never could see why everybody makes a big deal. Oh, we're going now up to see how the caucus is doing, and you know, blah 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 blah. I'm going. Eh, I don't know. It ain't. It isn't that important. And also New Hampshire, which is one of the like podunk places in the country. No, but that, at least that's an election. At but it's least the tiniest that, little state. Yep. Well, of course it's a tiny state. It's so why is it such a big deal? But uh, don't you know? Don't please don't insult uh, Jeff because he lives in maybe the smallest, one of the smallest states around. <laughs> yeah, but nobody cares. And about he's next to he's next to even a smaller state, Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Oh, there's too many people in Connecticut. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> yeah, Connecticut. You got to have less than a million people for anybody to get excited about you. Oh, really? No, okay. <laughs> I don't know. But I think I... it's. I think it might be because since we started having the voting for primaries, there's just a trend. Like whoever wins Iowa or whoever whoever wins New Hampshire is wins the whole thing. That's not true, though. Uh, oh, uh, well, that's what they make it seem like. No, we've had people go in and win I Iowa and then turn oh. around and win New Hampshire and then lose everything else. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Well, then I, yeah. I was just wondering. I thought maybe that's why. Who is one one Iowa and, yeah. and never went anywhere after that? So it doesn't mean, mean anything. Well, and don't, and don't get me started on primaries. I think they're the most useless process we have. Oh, I agree. You know, it's why, just a big waste why, of money. Why did the state suddenly have to pay to hold these primaries? That really, they what they used to do is it's not embedded in the Constitution to begin with. Okay, and and early on we didn't even have primaries. What did they do? They went and did a thing called a convention. That's what the conventions were about. And they would go to the convention and they would go caucus with each other and they would fight and. People give speeches and and fight for the, and it lasted maybe seven days and at the end of the seven days they would come out with a uh, uh, you know their standard bearer. Yeah. Do it that way. Don't cost us a fortune. Like in New York State, how much money do we spend for a caucus? I mean, for a a, a primary. Yeah. You know. I just think it's useless. Totally useless. Well, it's worse here because in, in Texas, if, if, if you don't get a majority, you got to have a, a runoff. So they have to do two elections for the primary. Yeah. So, I mean, it, and it costs a lot of money for the states to do this. And the only people that are have an advantage out of all of this are the, uh, are the parties who are having the states do their work for them, you know. And so what does the, the convention become? It becomes, a, you know, a, a big four-day commercial on television yeah. for that political party, and that's it. But I remember when I was a kid, they used to have the conventions, and they were huge. I mean, I, if you yeah. look at pictures of them, far bigger than they are. And nobody knew who was going to win ahead of time. And, you know, you, you, in fact, I remember in the paper, in the newspaper, they used to publish, like, uh, little ballots and stuff so you could keep track of each of the votes in each of the, and many times it would go into like 15 votes before they found somebody, you know? Uh, and, and so I, I just I just found it, <clears throat> I found it, uh, I find it ridiculous, this whole primary situation. I think there was a, I watched a documentary about Truman on Netflix and how, how he was picked at a caucus, at the caucus, at the, at the, at the convention, mm -hmm. the convention. Yeah. yeah. And boy, what a ruckus that was! Boy, I mean, it was quite. Oh quite yeah, a lot they of would fighting go and, they would, and yelling and yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was exciting. 
Yeah. Yeah. And he just came out of nowhere, and he became the. Well, it happened. Know, have a dark horse that would come out and win the prime. Nobody. Yeah. Even knew the, uh, yeah. The convention. The yeah. Nomination. Nobody even knew about him. They never yeah. heard of him. Yeah. Or, or yeah, or they would say, "Hey, everybody is all, we're all tied up, and there's no real winner. Why don't we all go for this guy?" And they'd take a yeah. get, pluck a guy out of nowhere. I think and, that's what Truman was. Yeah, was that there, was, what there were like two two no. big time politicians that were fighting it out, and then all of a sudden, no, no, you're wrong. Oop. You're wrong. Oh, oh, I, I mean, maybe I'm remembering wrong because yeah. Truman, uh, Truman was the yeah. vice president of, of yeah, he was Roosevelt. Vice president of Roosevelt. Yeah. Uh, right, but. But there was another guy in there who was. Uh, I can't. I'm sorry. I, in I, those so days, vague. in those days, the person who was nominated for president decided who he wanted running for vice president. With oh, okay. Decided on his running mate. Am I right about that, Charlie? I don't think I'm it wrong. Still about is. That. Well, I mean, it still is now. Whoever yeah. They pick him now, but. <clears throat> yeah, like where did Sarah Palin come from? Yeah. You know. Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> Don't don't bother mind him, folks. He has a bad neck. Mm. It's just the blood flow. Problem. Hey, Kevin, what's up? Not much. How you doing? <laughs> don't let us bother you. Is he scratching off lottery tickets? Oh, no, no. What are you doing here? Grumpy problems and huh? I'm having internet problems and Wi-Fi problems. So really? They what, disappear. What's I don't know. what's the internet problem? You look fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, I reconfigured my mesh system here, and I think I screwed it up. So I, I may disappear. I don't know. Hmm. Really? Why are people coming out to your house to get you? Because you really no, no. <laughs> aliens. Yeah. He might end yeah. up in Jeff's living room. Well, at least you're nice and red, which mm. is. I yeah, you, you really stand out with those colors. Well, you know what I do in this place, what I've done, and up, up until recently, now I do have a couple of mesh systems in here. Mm -hmm. But uh, I hardwire the whole house. That's what I did. Hardwiring I never goes bad, you know? <clears throat> yeah, I would if I could, but... We had an electrician come in and do it. Really? I bought a staple gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I live in an Eichler where there's no place to put the wires. <clears throat> oh, really? No roof. No. no oh, 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 there's not. There's no basement. That's there's no basement. There's no attic. There's not. There's no space between the walls and the. So I could have put it all on the outside, but it would, would have looked like shit. Yeah. So if you hang on to that house for another thirty years, it's probably going to double in value, right? When I'm ninety-two. <laughs> It's like the Ferrari thing. Well, haven't they gone up in in worth because they're you know you you own. Uh, oh God, yeah. I mean, it's like three point four million. I think you should explain to the audience who doesn't know who Eichler was. I don't want them to know what. No. Who, who, who who Eichler was and why Eichler homes are so special. Well, he was a, a home, an architect designer after the Second World War who built. A gazillion houses here in California, in San Francisco Bay Area, in Los Angeles, that are unique in that they have a lot of light and high windows that go from ceiling to floor, and uh, they were very they were very modern. Every very house sharp. pretty much looked like the one next door to it, though. No, there's a bunch of. They, or they held the, they held the plans up to the light and just turned them around and stuff. You know? No, I mean there's some that have that have like. Uh, Piazza things in them. Uh, we don't have that. Um, some have flat roofs. Some don't. Our, ours does not have a flat roof. It has. It's a. It's a, a cathedral type but ceiling. No, huh? hmm. no. Nope. So they were built. They were built on a slab. Hmm. And there's no. There's no attic. There's. No there's basement. no. Uh, there, hmm. There's no subfloor. Mm -hmm. But these were built in tracks. These were tract homes. They were tract homes, and they were done built very quickly. Although there are some that are real high end, and they're larger, and they're and the construction is much nicer mm -hmm. and more established. Uh, and there's a lot of those in. But this was meant to, to that. This was really meant to meet the post-war boom. And, yeah, and there were so uh, many young people coming back from from the war who wanted to wanted start homes. a family and, these, and, buy and these a house. were these were reasonably priced, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, they were. 
Yeah. What's the name of the architect? Eichler. Eichler. E i c h l e r. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's I, many, many thousands of them in, in California. They have destroyed a lot of them, though, haven't they? Pardon? They've destroyed a lot of them, haven't they? Well, yeah. Well, yeah, the, the many neighborhoods are trying to prevent that from happening. Um, there's some you can't destroy because there are custom Eichlers and high-end Eichlers that are so, uh, that are that are considered uh, what do you call it uh, monuments, you know, historical landmarks. Historical yeah. landmarks. This building uh, I'm in is a is a landmark building. Yeah. 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 And um, they're beautiful. They're great. I love it. I mean, I, I, I don't love the problems, like <laughs> leaky roofs. We just had to put in, we've done two roofs so far since we've lived here. Wow. Um, because the, the, the roofs are so either completely flat or almost flat, and so they, they leak like crazy. Uh, so, mm -hmm. um, windows are expensive. The windows are not standard size, so <laughs> when we had to redo all the windows, it cost an arm and a leg. Um, God. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. of you rich folks that live in the neighborhood you live in, I won't denounce where that is, but they can afford stuff like that. Hey, a friend of mine had yeah. one, and it was two blocks off of 101. Oh, really? <laughs> well, there's some, yeah. there's some in Sunnyvale. Uh, there's Berlin some game, yeah. Oh, Berlin game. Yeah, in Berlin yeah. game, there's some. In Sunnyvale, there's... There's, uh, a, there's probably more in the Bay Area than any other geographical area. Maybe I know there's a lot in L.A. too. Yeah, in L.A. is so huge, so I, I'm not sure. We had uh, a guy here in New York. I mean, I wasn't here at the time, so I because I, uh, I was living in California. That's how I know all about Eichler. But here we had Lefrak, and he we well, place yeah. called Lefrak City, yeah, which were all right these homes. Yeah. Huh? Wait, what do you it's say? It's not too far from where I live. Well, it's about 15 mm. minutes. Are they still what are the style? Mm. It was, Sorry. It was pretty know. much tracked homes. You know, yeah, uh, and not Eichler had a, a had an identifiable style. I don't know that Left Rack actually had an identifiable style, but all well, the there houses. Are other, there are like other big apartment buildings, like really overlooking the Long Island. Well, no, Street. that was the apartment buildings, but they were actually were tracked homes. At one oh, time. really? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. There were there were at least two other builders Wait. who copied Eichler. Yeah. And and there's yeah. some of those homes in my neighborhood as well. Jeff seems. I to, used to live in one. Je, je, it looks like Jeff knows something about this. I I used to have a house in Connecticut. Was it was trying to look like Frank Lloyd Wright? I don't know if you ever saw. Yes. This. What do you mean, old and craggy? No. No. no <laughs> but um, no, he had anyway, cool stuff. the house was was quite unique, and. And of course, you know, after years, 10 years or whatever, you realize you're talking to your good friend who's a good mechanic who works on fixing houses mm -hmm. and this and that. And he goes, you know, I think you ought to get rid of this house now because some of the fundamental stuff that nobody else can figure out without yep. spending more than it cost the building again. well especially frank lloyd wright homes he he doesn't yeah. he wasn't into practicality it was all no. the art yeah no, well so I, I i think i may i don't know if i told the story here i know i was i think i was telling the story to marjorie the other day and i may have told it here that in uh in marin county uh up on the hill i lived in san anselmo there was somebody building a very what looked like a really weird house so i drove over there one day and I saw this guy, and he was building the house himself. Yeah. And I said, so you're building this house all on your own? He says, yeah, I'm building it from the ground up. I said, boy, it has an unusual look. It look. And he said, it should. See, I, he says, I work, I'm working with uh, the construction of the Marin County Civic Center. Oh, and wow. I got to know Frank Lloyd Wright. <laughs> and Frank Lloyd Wright knew that I wanted to build a home, so he just wrote these plans out for me. Yeah, <laughs> and he was building a Frank Lloyd Wright home, which now sits wow. probably to this day sits in San Anselmo. So another another bunch of homes throughout, especially in the West, are uh, Del Webb. Oh yeah, 
Del Webb built, built a lot of, like he built Sun City. Uh, well, he was yeah, another one of those city. those cracked home people, you know. Yep. But he wasn't yep. a very good one. I don't think his stuff was that terrific. It was just practical. Uh, he, he, you know, he did a lot of Del Webb where the, I guess they're uh, rentals and the stuff I got for vacation rentals. He yeah. actually, he was actually the contractor in history. He was actually the contractor that built the, the uh, what was the, the first casino that Bugsy Siegel was involved with? The oh. Flamingo. Flamingo. He built mm -hmm. that. And when Del Webb found out in person that who Siegel was and stuff, Siegel told him, he said, don't worry, we only kill our own. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think did uh, if Del Webb did do, I think he may have done the Flamingo. Or yeah, at least he was right. the contractor on it. Yeah. Yep. Big contractor. A lot but, of housing. But that thing went way they over still budget. Does them, I think. What? What'd you say? They still do them, I think, or the the company anyway. The Dell Does, Web company. Yes. Yeah, doesn't Dell Web do like um, what you know when you buy into the vacation or retirement communities? Was yeah. What it's yeah, mostly, yeah, that's yeah, what that's it is. Yeah. Probably the biggest one is called Sun City, Arizona. It's somewhere near Tucson. Yeah, well, there's one in yeah. Austin too. I was just there yes or this last weekend. I was right in Sun City. Oh. How many? Hundreds, hundreds of yes, uh, yes, Tony. You know, I did a Google search on Frank Lloyd Wright, and you know who has a documentary on Ken Burns? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I'm going to have to watch this now. Mm. Yeah, no, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright was amazing, I think, as, a, as, an, uh, as an architect. Uh, when you look at the Marin County Civic Center, it is the most unusual building you will ever see. And uh, it, it, it lived up to his feeling that you didn't build you didn't move dirt to make room for your for your uh, for your building you built your building over the earth in other words you you built it into the earth uh, and uh, so if you had a hill several hills mm. it conformed to the hills I you know it was that. amazing it, and the Marin County Civic Center uh, is probably the best example of that, you know. Uh, although his homes, like you know, what's that one with the waterfall going right through the Falling house? Water, mm -hmm. yeah. Falling water, yeah. yeah. Just magnificent, just magnificent. Gorgeous. Yes, uh, I have I have a realtor friend. She's really successful. She just sold a Frank Lloyd Wright home in Atherton, okay. and I, I went and did the tour. Um, and he, like you said, the house was built, there are these giant oak trees, and the house was built around the oak trees. Um, I don't know, he, I mean, he must have figured out how big the oak trees were going to get, because they had, they didn't wreck the house. Yeah. yeah. Um, Did you and, on the house? No, it was totally <laughs> impractical. The, um, the bedrooms were tiny, and, really? and they had these little tiny bathrooms that you could barely squeeze through the walls to get into. Oh, I would have been in problem, Bill. But then they had this <laughs> big room that was so wonderful with a big fireplace on the end. It was incredible. Yeah, great parties. Well, you yeah. know, people today, if they if they go to office buildings, you mm -hmm. may notice that if there's a window, it then seems to be a cathedral window because it seems to go up higher almost than the ceiling mm -hmm. because there is then a lip put in it doesn't let you see the top of the window, which is probably only a few inches above that lip. And that was a, a, a creation of Frank Lloyd Wright, so that you would think that rooms were bigger than they really were, and that the, the windows were uh, like yeah. cathedral windows when they really weren't at all. They went on for infinity. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's the kind of brilliance that he engendered, you know. The uh, San Jose Center for, for Poor Me for performing arts is a Frank Lloyd Wright building, and it's beautiful. The only problem is, is he didn't like, we didn't want to put an aisle down the center. And so when you go there, if you have a seat in the middle of, of this 2,500 person theater, you have to, it's like Bugs Bunny. Excuse me, pod me, pod me, excuse yeah, me, man. Pod, like, or you got to climb. And so when the Lion King came, they demanded that they took out two rows in the middle. Have you, for, have for you ever aisle. sat in there? It's yes. crazy. I went I there once years ago with a friend, and I'm like, our seats are like 40 seats over. Well, I, I, it's horrible. I, I, it's I horrible. Found out, I found out something the other day. 
you know, Frank Lloyd Wright built beautiful buildings. They weren't exactly necessarily functional. No. And we have one here in New York called the Guggenheim Museum. Yeah. Which is one of the it, somebody said the he didn't famous. care about building a museum. He cared about making a monument to Frank Lloyd Wright with that building. Yeah. Oh, and what it is is it's an infinite uh, museum in which it goes down in a loop, so that all the pictures on the walls are yeah, look, in yeah. this loop, and oh, then there really? is a banister. There's a a wall. A, 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 it can't call it a wall, but you know. If you back up, you hit a a, a wall uh, that isn't does is not a wall. It's a balcony, okay. And what I what they were saying in this documentary is watching is it's totally inefficient because if you put up a painting, sometimes you want to walk back and look at the painting, and if you walk back enough to see the painting as a whole, you're gonna fall over the edge down into the atrium. So that that was Frank Lloyd Wright. He didn't care about the functionality of a building, he cared about how it looked. Right. So he built in in, in Los Angeles, I had to look it up, but in 1917, the Hollyhock House. In, in, it's in Los Angeles, it's one of the most famous houses that he built in California, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, he was uh, you know, but he was brilliant. He was brilliant. The architecture. I mean, if you ever if you ever seen, I went into the Guggenheim once, a uh, few years back, never been inside, and it's just isn't mm -hmm. it right, Jeff? It's phenomenal. I love it. It's There's just phenomenal. In Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, mean, I mean, there's so many great museums in New York. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that's a great place to the go. The biggest museum in the world, I think, is here. The you know. The museum on Fifth I think Avenue. They call it Connecticut, don't they? The Met, the um, Metropolitan Museum. Uh, uh, is it the Met? Is it's the Met. It's the Met. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love it's it. It's huge because what it is, it's not one building; it's two buildings. It's bigger than the Louvre. I, I believe so. Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, it also is the only building in Central Park. Central Park wasn't supposed to have any buildings, and they decided they would build this building in Central Park. So it's part of the park, really. Um, amazing. Just amazing. Pam, uh, Pam and uh, Andrew, our son, they went together about yeah. a week ago. I've never see. been into the Met, and I, I want to yeah. go. I love it. And he knows a separate way of how to get it in from the back. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very crowded to get in, okay. And particularly, this is time of like. Well, well, there are certain time. Time, there are certain days of the week too. I mean, I wouldn't do it on a Saturday or a Sunday, but you could probably do it on a Tuesday, and you wouldn't have that it, much trouble. It was probably closed during the first part of COVID, and that's why it's now really crowded trying to get in. Well, a yeah. lot of people are coming to New York. Oh yeah, I wish they would. At this time of year just to see all the bad stuff that they can't find. <laughs> anyway, I'm playing the theme song, the okay, infamous theme song, nope. which you can't hear. And I've, I've, mm -hmm. I, I finally figured out the reason is very simple. It's that uh, Facebook does not want you to hear, not Facebook, but YouTube. Wait a minute. Zoom. Zoom doesn't want you to yep. hear it. You know, mm -hmm. so. Because they're afraid of copyright stuff? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So. Yeah, but it's if strange. you own the music, why would they stop you? It, well, they just block everything. They don't have to they worry don't, about it. They don't write me a letter saying you don't own this music. Anyway. Hey, listen, uh, thanks for... It's great having you here, everybody. I appreciate it, you know. Uh, I appreciate uh, your, your participation, making my life easier because you do a lot of talking. Uh, by the way, Brian, you've hardly said anything tonight. You didn't know it Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why is that? Just quiet. Get dental work. What? <laughs> dental work. Yeah, dental work. That's no. a, <laughs> it's not dental work. I'm eating jelly bellies. Come on. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that's dental work eventually. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll say good night. Yeah. Well. Anyway. I. Uh, uh, yeah. And uh, first, let me say good night to Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, for being here. Uh, thank you very much, Charlie. Always a pleasure having you here. Uh, Alan, uh, love having you here when you pay attention to the program. Uh, 
Ray, thank you, and I hope your neck is better, Father thank Ray. You. Thank you. Thank uh, you. <laughs> you do look like a priest. Uh, yes. <laughs> thank you, Tony. Appreciate it. Uh, and, and Kevin, same to you. And, and it seems like your internet is working fine. You know? We will so make it more. And of course, Brian, always a pleasure whether you say anything or not. <laughs> you know? <laughs> anyway, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. And they are now leaving us in droves. Uh, 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 Amy Manuel is next. Oh, I gotta get out of here. Amy Manuel is next. Uh, she's here with uh, the intersection. She'll take your calls at Skype uh, at uh, 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 Skype uh, <laughs> Gabnet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, please tell her I love her. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>